past six months, I've been a full-time indie game developer. And over that time, I've spent $17,655 funding my studio, which seems like a lot of money. But if I was a studio of four or five people and had a lead designer, a developer, maybe a QA person, a marketer, a publisher, all those different things would, this, this number would be way, way higher, at least five X, if not like 10 X this number to fund a studio for six months. So because I'm a solo developer, this, this, this number here, this number, this only represents my cost of living, my cost to pay for the roof over my head, to pay for cat food, heck to pay for people food and to even pay for me to go see Dune 2 a second time, which I know is not a game development cost, but it is something I wanted to do because the movie is just that good. Today, we're going to dive into the actual numbers that I need to use to fund this studio. So it's going to talk about the, the income I've made from Steam, the income I've made from Twitch and YouTube, as well as the expenses and kind of looking at the projections of what it looks like to get this studio to be profitable. Because the big thing that you need to know about me is I did this accidentally back in 2022. And that was the result of getting my first game, Chess Survivors, out the door. In early 2022, I quit a toxic company that sucked. And I kind of stumbled my way into a mini sabbatical where I was going to take a break and just focus on game development, which at that point was a hobby. And then I really enjoyed doing this full time and wanted to try to get a game out the door. Uh, Chess Survivors during that time was about eight months in production of messing around and trying to learn more about game development and then about five months of production of Chess Survivors. And then in no November, I ran out of funding, got a new job, released Chess Survivors into early access. And then while I had a job, I started saving up more and more money and got myself up to $45,000 where at the beginning of this year, basically March 1st, I kicked off the second stint of being a full-time developer with far more funding in hand. I was not able to save this money strictly by being um, very frugal with my money. A lot of that came down to having Chess Survivors sell far better than I expected it to sell. To date, it sold about $20,000, which is insane, and it's still selling more and more and more, which is, I think, the big distinction between my stint back in 2022 as a full-time developer. I didn't really have any income. Now I have some income. Chess Survivors is selling copies. I don't take sponsorships on this channel because I want to be a game developer who makes YouTube videos. So if you want to support my channel further, the best way you can do that simply go play my games, especially Hexagod. Hexagod's coming out here uh, early early next year, but it's currently in a demo phase and there's gonna be a new build published later today. So I'd love it if you go play it, give me some feedback and consider giving it a wish list. And so without further ado, let's dive in to some of those numbers. So this is, this is, this, these, these are the honest numbers. I've scrubbed away a bunch of my budgeting stuff because there's personal information in there and you don't really care about the, the, the nitty gritty details that over the course of the past couple months, you can see that there is a pretty, pretty flat amount of total spending about 30,000, uh, not 30, <laughs> $3,000 a month. So that represents how much money I spend on groceries, my mortgage, my internet. And then the blue line or the, the green line here is going to be those income numbers over time, slowly creeping up, which is really good to see, as well as then the difference between those is the blue line and that net is then coming down proportionally. So if you're curious about those exact numbers in the past six months from Steam alone, I have made about $2,000 from Twitch and my coffee account. I have made $1,000 and then YouTube is $253. $3. So by far not enough money to live off of by any means, but that is starting to fill out this income. So you can see here we're uh, in the last month, this was the highest month of income I've had, which is partly due to the summer sale, as well as some bundling for chest survivors. Chest survivors is in two bundles here. Not enough money to live off of by any means. You know, I'm still running a pretty big deficit any given month. I can see myself becoming more profitable. I'm currently working on Hexagod, which is gonna be my upcoming game. Uh, I'm slated right now to be in the February Next Fest, which means we have about six months to I say we, because I mean you, me, my Twitch chat. Basically, I have six months to get this game in a really good demo state and then releasing sometime early next year, which will be very, very exciting. And that'll add in another line item into Steam. So I say time and time again in this channel that I want to be a game developer who makes YouTube videos. Part of that means just making just making a fucking YouTube video for you, showing my process, not over editing it and just sharing what it looks like, making that a nice lean process. But it also means that my profit center here is very clearly going to be Steam and my most direct way to profitability, which is going to look like making sure that I can um, save up. What do I need every month? 
uh, I need every year, I need to make about $36,000 to break even. And that is the conservative estimate for me as a, uh, for me to, to live on this world. You can see over here, I have a more broken out estimate of how much it's gonna cost me every month to live. And all of these numbers are rounded up. When I'm doing projections like this, if I'm putting my mortgage, I'm not putting the exact amount of mortgage I'm spending, I'm I'm ramping it up a bit. My flexible spending, which is how much I spend on eating out, how much I spend on uh, coffee, or how much I spend on groceries, or if I'm gonna go golfing or see Dune 2, Dune 2 for a third time, it's not in theaters anymore, but. The fun thing is Interstellar is coming back to IMAX this fall, so maybe I'll go see that a few times. Uh, anyways, anyways, back uh, moving away from IMAX movies again. Um, all these numbers are rounded up, and that just helps give you, uh, basically, if you mess up one of these numbers, you're not gonna undercut yourself. If anything, you're, you wanna over overestimate how much your costs are gonna be and underestimate your revenue so that you can see my monthly cost here is about two, uh, 2,795, and then if I do a 10% overage, on that estimate, I can project doing a little bit of math in here that my average monthly cost is gonna be $3,075, which works out to be about 100 bucks a day to live, which is kind of an interesting number to know of how much money, based off the average amount you're spending, do you need every day to live? If we then put in my current amount of funding I have, you can then do a little bit of math, um, simply taking the average cost divided by this and see how many days left of funding I have, which turns out to be 0.88 years. And if we anchor that date to the first of the month, month which is when I do my budget, I do a monthly budget, you can see with a conservative estimate, I will run out of funding on the 19th of July next year. But, and this is the interesting part, that is considering I'm making no money. And if we go back to this, remember, I am making some money every month and the future projections are gonna include some hexagon money, some growth in the YouTube channel, some growth in my Twitch numbers. You can see these are the graphs of Twitch plus coffee and YouTube. You can see things are growing upward. And if we keep going down the projections, then if I look at the last three months of how much money I've kind of net, so net would be how much money I spent versus how much money I make, my average, my average per month is going to be uh, one one thousand eight hundred and seventy five bucks. So if I put that then in this average column, and this is going to be much more of like a, a realistic look at how much money I can spend based off of how much money I'm taking in and how how long that longevity goes. The average cost per day goes down to sixty two dollars. So right now I'm basically covering forty percent of my daily costs. That number gives me 1.44 years, which means that gives me to February 9th of 2026. So way further out, which is super interesting to see, right? That is the power of kind of having funding and starting to start making money is as I do that, the projection starts to go to dot, dot, dot. And if you keep this up and say this number, uh, we bring this average cost down and say every month my average costs become a thousand bucks a month, all of a sudden that goes even further out, right? So it's 516 at 2027. So we have a whole nother year. I think this stuff is super interesting. I love spreadsheets. My my partner, she makes fun of me sometimes for spreadsheets, but this stuff really does give me some sort of certainty in a really unpredictable environment, like trying to fund your studio. And I was joking about it with my partner the other day, but I realistically see a future where I could hire her as an admin person to run the YouTube channel or to help with marketing and use some of her experience is to help me grow the studio even larger. And heck, maybe someday I'll be hiring one of you to join the team. Don't leave your resumes below or anything like that. That's just a pipe dream. Right now I'm sticking with the solo studio because it's nice and lean. And uh, I just want to say thank you. Thank you if you've helped me uh, make Hexagod better, if you've played Chess Survivors, or if you simply just watched the video until this point. Um, that, that helps. Every little bit is going to help me move those projections further and further out so that eventually I'm going to have a profitable studio and a bunch of games that I'm incredibly proud of.